In this video, we're covering a tip with the average function. You know, just your average tip. Welcome back to All About That Bass. My name is Justin, and it's my goal here to help you understand Airtable more completely. Speaking of completely, I completely dropped off the face of the earth for the better part of a year, and my deepest apologies for that. My hope for this year, for 2022, is to put out a whole lot more stuff on a much more regular basis for you. So stay tuned for more things coming up. One more thing I almost forgot to mention here. Thankfully, my wife's horse reminded me about this. Thank you, Griffin. I do appreciate that. Uh, I've got a newsletter coming out, the Bass Notes Newsletter. Uh, coming out every week on Friday. You can check that out for some regular Airtable tips and tricks and all kinds of good stuff. So check that out. Link in the description below where you can find out how to subscribe to the Base Notes newsletter. So where exactly are we starting? Well, I dug back into my archives and I found some interesting material I recorded before this whole delay began that I think is kind of useful. It's about the average function. So let's dive into that. The basic situation here is we've got a series of checkbox fields and we have a series of value fields over here. And depending on which boxes are checked, we want to average the proper values together. So for a single field, it's just gonna be passing that value straight through to the result. If I check the boxes for two fields, then those two combine and get averaged together and so forth. So we've got lots of different possible combinations in here, and the result is a very long and complex formula checking for every single possible option. Now I've copied that formula over here to make it a little easier to read, and even though it may be <laughs> a little easier to read, it's still a very complex formula because we have to check for every single possible combination across all four of those fields. Now we're skipping the option where they're all unchecked, but for all the others, we've got 15 different choices in here, and it's a bit of a mess. So here's what I found. It's a really cool trick with the average function if you have a situation similar to this. What you can do is start off by typing the average function, and inside of that, you put this. You check for each field one at a time and only include its value if that checkbox is on. So I can just do if, I can say CK1. Now the shortcut for this, again, just check if CK1, that checks to see if that is turned on. So I don't need to see if it's one. Uh, what I want to include then is V1 if that's the case. Do the same thing down here, if CK2, now my capital K should be lowercase K for the CK, there we go. If that's true, then include value two. Same thing for V3, if CK3, V3, and then finally, if CK4, we're gonna add V4. Now, what you might think at first is that, okay, if checkbox one is not checked, it passes a zero for this value. But what it actually does is it passes nothing. So if all three of these down here, two, three, and four are checked, but one is not, it will only average three values, add them all together, divided by three. It won't divide by four because that one is not just passing it as a zero. Again, it's not passed at all to the average function. So now we've taken all this mess up here and reduced it down to this. If I copy this formula out here, paste it in here, replace all that, we have the exact same result. So I can check any of these on that I want. Only the ones that are checked have their proper values passed into the average. And then if it's a single value, it just passes through as a single value, pretty much straight through. So a really fun example, which you can do with this average function with the proper setup. While I was editing this video, I discovered a few other things. So I thought I'd share them. First off, in case you're wondering how to get rid of this whole NAN, which stands for not a number, which is there because we're trying to actually divide by zero by having four values divide by nothing in this case. The way you get around that is by adding a little bit of an addition to your formula to check to see if the values exist before doing the average. So I'm gonna open this up and just do a simple if, and I'm gonna say if the sum of those fields, so we have V1, V2, V3, and V4. If that sum is something besides zero, that will return a true value and that will calculate the average function. So that gets rid of the whole NAN, not a number entries in there. But you may be wondering, 
we're still dividing by four, are we not? Why does it say three, which is the actual average of five plus one divided by the two values there? The reason it's three and not some other value is because these fields are actually empty. So this is point number two. If you want to create a situation where rather than having checkbox fields determine which values are averaged, just don't put values in those fields. If I actually add a zero in V2 here, notice what happens. Now the average value changes. It's now five plus one, which is six, divided by three, which is two. So to get rid of that extra average calculation point in there, we just don't put a value in. So if you don't need to put the values in the calculation, then just don't include them. And only if you put a zero in those places will the average function count that extra zero value towards the total number of values being part of the average. That's it for now. Remember to subscribe if you want to see what's next and give this a like if you like. I'll see you next time.